Yeah, and this is a pattern using the especially adapted rose comb on the outer edges. As you can see, I've sealed the seal in around the light fitting, the area I intend to wear a or texture onto. We're looking for this sheen before we texture onto the surface because if I texture straight onto a matte, flat surface, this surface is quite porous. So as soon as I lay the texture onto the surface, it'll draw into the seal in and it will not give you enough time to use your comb tools. So I've sealed the ceiling around the light fitting with something called a pink called vinyl silk. And vinyl silk, once applied and dried, leaves a shiny area, which is ideal for comb patterns. I want to talk about the tools and materials that we can do to, uh, we can use to create this pattern. First of all, we have a bucket of texture which will be mixed to the correct consistency for comb tools. I've used a bumper. A bumper is a tool which is quite cheap, easy to use for occasional use, and basically that's it. And this is attached to a, a wooden broom handle and you bump up and down the texture. Also, we require a bucket with some water in. This bucket here will be used to wash our bumper out and to blend the pattern in using a sponge. I got three standard texturing comb tools, the 10 inch, six and a half inch, and a three and a half inch. We have a scraper, a metal blade scraper, and we have a corker. The scraper and corker I'm gonna to use together, and I'm going to actually apply the texture around the perimeter of the light rose fitting to put the texture onto the ceiling. And we've got a water brush, you know, for washing down the tools. And any blemishes and we have a sponge for blending the texture pattern into the existing flat ceiling and these are the tools that are required to do this particular pattern as you can see now the ceiling, which I sealed around the perimeter of the rose, is dried off, and that's good. Never attempt the texture onto wet sealer. You must let it dry off properly, adequately first. So this is nice and dry, so we will begin our pattern. And what we're going to do first is uh, lay the texture onto the ceiling, about 11 inches around the perimeter of the rose. For the inverted rose, uh, centre rose piece, we're going to use three texturing combs, standard texturing combs, a 10 inch standard texturing comb, a 6.5 inch standard texturing comb and a 3.5 inch standard texturing comb. And we're going to create the inverted centre piece around the centre light fitting using these three tools. And of course when the entire ceiling is painted, including the textured rose, all one colour, it look quite nice and this saves you texturing your entire ceiling. You need to apply the texture on reasonably thick and obviously it's, it has to be as wide or a little bit wider than the width of the 10 inch comb that's going to go around the perimeter. And we'll have a look at that right now. So I'll leave this on. Take the 10 inch comb and just lightly run it through the pattern. Don't use too much pressure, just let the comb do the work and don't dig into the ceiling. For this particular center rules effect, we're going to use um, three texturing combs. We're going to use a 10 inch standard texturing comb and we're going to use a six and a half inch rose comb. And we're also going to use a three and a half inch rose comb. A 
attractive pattern. And that's if you don't want to do the entire ceiling with texture. And imagine if this ceiling and the, and the texture grows once dried, it's painted all texture. one colour. I've cut this specific 10 inch comb here, and I don't know if you can see, it's very deep. It's very deep. I'm looking for a deep um, finish on this pattern. I'm also going to use a six and a half inch standard texturing comb to step down the comb. And then to finally, I'm going to use a three and a half inch rose comb to create the pattern around the light. Yeah, and this is a pattern using the especially adapted rose comb on the outer edges. Looks quite attractive, I think. If you can imagine, once the texture is dry, you can paint the whole ceiling, the entire ceiling, plus the, the textured rows, all one colour, and all you're left with then is the texture centred effect around the light fitting where you don't need to texture the entire ceiling. This centre piece was created using a 10 inch standard texturing comb, a 6.5 inch rose comb for the centre. And for the third tool down, the smallest comb, was a three and a half inch standard texturing comb to create this centre rose fitting or centre rose piece out of texture. And of course, when the entire ceiling is painted, including the textured rose, all one colour, it look quite nice. And this sees you texturing your entire ceiling. First step is now, take the 10 inch comb and just lightly run it through the pattern. Don't use too much pressure, just let the comb do the work and don't dig into the ceiling. To apply it to the edge of the pattern. As you can see it's starting to come there and we're looking for depth. Depth of texture, we want depth of texture on the ceiling so the comb shows through there. What I'm trying to do is concentrate on making sure I've got a nice thick, thickish band of texture right on the edge of the pattern. We're looking for that as well, so make sure you apply the texture nice and thick. Right, as you can see, I've gone right around the perimeter of the rose with a 10 inch standard texturing comb. So I'm going to clean off my comb now and then we're going to commence to do the first pattern. As a quick tip, never wash the handle or wet the handle of your texturing comb while you're using it because it just makes it slippery and impossible to control. So now, we're just going to lay the comb on and just lay the comb down slightly at an angle and nice and gently we're just going to go along the perimeter as such.
If you notice, when I'm, I'm using the centre rows as a template, bouncing off the centre rows, but instead of staying in one place, I'm actually moving around the rows and making sure I'm moving around the top so all these fans stay pretty equal as you're working away. And that's our first set of textures on, as you can see, we've gone right along the edges. But don't worry about these edges here because once the three cone pattern is completed, we use a sponge and we just gently blend in the edges here onto the existing ceiling so you don't need to texture the whole of the ceiling. What we're going to do now is step down to the, uh, the 6.5 inch comb tool. So we're going to create the smaller pattern. But first of all, because we want to we want to keep depth on there, we're going to load up the the edge of the comb with a band of texture. I'm going to draw through there nice and gently, following the perimeter of the rows. And then we have the second set of texture pattern on the ceiling. The third step now is to step down to the three and a half inch rows, uh, three and a half inch standard comb tool, and we're going to create the pattern into the centre. And the same again, we're going to load a band of texture onto the edge of the comb tool to apply it onto the ceiling to give us the depth we're looking for. Nice and gently use a comb. Right, what we're going to do now is use um, the finger technique, only to take away these little dribbles here, these little dribbles there. So you've got to be very steady with the finger, take your time, and just wipe it across. Take your time, wipe it across. And finally, we're going to finish off the edge around the centre light fit and to give a nice neat finish. And once again, we're going to use a finger and just gently follow the centre rose piece around and wipe off the excessive texture. Right, so far we've laid the pattern on, and now you can let this dry for 10-15 minutes if you want to, or you can jump on it straight away. We're going to use a sponge, a soft sponge, which is wet, and what we're going to do, we're going to blend in the edges so it blends into the existing ceiling, so all we have is just the, the, the rose effect around the light. So just take your time. And just blend in to the existing ceiling. Or basically wipe off the edges is what we're looking for.
once it's all dry you're going to emulsion the seal in all one colour and all you're left then with the, is the effect of this centrepiece created out of texture and cones. We're going to use three texturing combs, standard texturing combs, a 10 inch standard texturing comb, a 6.5 inch standard texturing comb and a 3.5 inch standard texturing comb. If you can imagine, once the texture is dry you can paint the whole ceiling, the entire ceiling, plus the, the textured rows, all one colour and all you're left with then is the texture centred effect around the light fitting where you don't need to texture the entire ceiling. Using a 10 inch standard texturing comb tool I'm going to prime the edges with a bit of texture and then I'm going to commence to do the first pattern. I'm going to step down the comb now, I'm going for 6.5 inch standard comb and I'm going to create the same pattern as I did there for the first pattern, I'm going to create the same pattern on the second pattern but I'm going to slightly stagger so you can see an effect taking place nice and gently lay it on apply more texture if you're a bit short on texture so lay it on nice and gently Lay it on, and then we're going to create the second pattern. As you can see, this second pattern here is a little bit tighter than the first pattern. Finally, we're going to use a three and a half inch standard texturing comb to do the final pattern in the centre. And you can do this two ways: you can keep them nice and tight, or you can nice and tight, or you can make them bigger. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to try the tight one first. really tight. Keep them very close together. Finally, finish off the edges around the perimeter with your finger. And to once this has gone off for about 10 or 15 minutes, just use a wet sponge, blend in the high pads so it blends into the ceiling. With this stop and stab line, you can let the thing go off completely dry, and then you can sort of wipe it over with a sponge until it disappears, or you can use your finger, which is a bit trippy but doable and then you can tie your ugly ground once it's dried off so this is the effect using three standard texturing comb tools
we're going to use three texturing combs, standard texturing combs, a 10 inch standard texturing comb, a 6.5 inch standard texturing comb and a 3.5 inch standard texturing comb. Using a corker, we're going to start by laying a band of texture onto the area. It's always a good idea to make sure there's no lumps in your texture. When you mix your texture, make sure there's no lumps. If you lay texture on the uh, area and you see any little lumps and mixed texture, just take them out. And because we're using a 10 inch comb, make sure the texture is applied a little bit over 10 inches around the pen meter. Using a 10 inch comb tool, just gently prime the tool. Just gently lay the, to uh, the texturing comb onto the texture. And make sure it's all filled in. And there's no marks into the edges of the comb. And load the comb texture on the edge to make sure the texture goes nicely onto the perimeter of the pattern. Once again, it's all about depth, depth of texture. I don't know if you can see there, I've dragged a bit of muck on the comb so I did, so I'm going to take it out. I'm going to replace nice and gently. If you can see there, we've got a little blemish, a hair actually from the paintbrush, and that's got to go. <laughs> I've gone right around the edges now, as you can see, and the second stage now is to use. The six and a half inch standard texturing comb. I'm going to load the comb up with texture once again, apply the depth, the depth we need. I'm just going to lay it gently around the perimeter as such. Finally, I'm going to use a 3.5 inch standard texturing comb tool and complete the pattern. Just lay texture into the centre there to create the depth of texture. It's the depth we're looking for all the time, the depth of texture. Right, once we've completed, we're going to use a finger technique now just to take away these little blemishes uh, here and here. Just be very gentle. If you don't want to do this when it's dry, when it's wet, you can wait for it all to dry off and you can just pick them off then, which is advisable for doing this type of pattern, so you don't damage any of that. But for the moment, I'm just going to run my finger gently over there. And finally, one more time, use your finger around the perimeter. Just a wipe off. That's good. I'm happy with that. 
when the whole thing is gone off for about 10 or 15 minutes, when the pattern is, and then see all the overlap? We can wipe away this with a damp sponge, just gently blend it into the ceiling to create a nice finish. And there we are, an inverted rose, center rose piece, using three texturing combs, standard texturing comb tools. And there we have this pattern now around the light using three texturing combs, a 10 inch standard texturing comb, the 6.5 inch rose comb and the 3.5 inch rose comb. Make sure you lay the texture on around the perimeter of the rose, nice and thick. You want the texture on nice and thick. Lay it on with your corker, with your comb. You can use a, a brush, you can use a roller. Just make sure the texture is laid on a little bit wider than the comb tool. And now we've got this on there, we're going to create our first pattern. If you come across the edges here and you haven't put enough texture on, no, no problem. Jump onto it straight away. It's not the road. For the second set of texture, now we're going to use this six and a half inch rose comb. I'm going to lay texture onto the comb. I'm starting to apply around the edges now. We want depth, we're looking for depth here. Because the rose comb is uh, thicker and deeper cut, make sure you put adequate texture onto the comb tool. Once again, we're looking for a nice depth of texture on our, on our ceiling. But once you've applied and you're happy this thick enough all around, clean off your, your comb and then we're going to create the second stage of the pattern. There's two ways to do this. Two ways to do this. So we're going to use just a smooth edge as such. Lay the comb down and just gently draw through the texture. Where we have a stop and start edge, what we do with this particular pattern is we let it go off quite a bit so it's quite stiff and then we 
brush into these with a sponge and it smooths in and blends in this outer pattern here. So that's stage two now using the rose comb. Now we're going to use three, three and a half inch rose comb for the centre, the final centre piece. So we'll load the comb up and lay the texture on first, nice and gently, create us some depth. And so create us some depth. Then we commence to do the flower using the comb tool. And finally, finish off with a finger using the centre plastic piece as a template to follow around and just tidy up the edges there. Now this pattern is created, now you can leave this go off for 10 minutes, 10-15 minutes and then blend in the outer edges here with a soft sponge and water and just create, uh, so this blends into the existing flat ceiling so you don't have to texture the whole ceiling. A small sponge, plenty of water on there and just follow the pattern, blend it into the existing ceiling. Um, looking better now, blending into the ceiling. It's good to do this while it's pretty wet. It saves you a lot of time later on. As you can imagine, when the ceiling is painted all one colour, the texture once dried and the whole ceiling, you've created yourself out of texturing combs and texture an attractive centre rose piece. For this particular rose effect around the centre light fitting, uh, creating other texture, I've cut this specific 10 inch comb here, and I don't know if you can see, it's very deep, it's very deep, I'm looking for a deep um, finish on this pattern. I'm also going to use a 6.5 inch standard texturing comb to step down the comb, and then to finally I'm going to use a 3.5 inch rose comb to create the pattern around the light. Using a 10 inch comb, this 10 inch specially adapted rose comb, I'm laying on a thick band of texture around the light fitting. This particular rose pattern is really thick, which, um, which is required really for a centre light fitting piece like this, uh, creating all the texture. So lay the texture on and don't skimp. Make sure right on the edge of the pattern 
the sufficient texture there. commence to do the pattern. Grab the six and a half inch stand of comb. Leave the texture around. We could give this type of effect, but I'm not going to use this effect on this pattern, on this design. I'm going to actually create a pattern I'm keeping the uh, combs nice and tight together nice and tight Finally, to finish off, I'm using the three and a half inch rose comb for the last pattern. Just lay it on, load your comb up and you want texture if you require it. Lay it on nice and thick. to do the pattern. Finally, use your finger along the edge of the light fitting and create a nice tidy edge, wipe off surplus texture. You can let that dry off for 10 minutes. Or you can blend this straight in straight away, which I'm going to do now. Using a sponge and water, I'm just gently going to blend in the uh, outer edge into the existing ceiling. If you don't want to use a, a sponge for blending in, you can use a, a soft paintbrush. You can just gently blend in 
the tapping into the existing ceiling so it's a nice smooth blending finish. Yeah, and this is a pattern using the especially adapted rose cone on the outer edges. Looks quite attractive, I think. This center piece was created using a 10 inch standard texturing comb, a six and a half inch rose comb for the center, and for the third tool down, the smallest comb was a three and a half inch standard texturing comb to create this center rose fitting or center rose piece out of texture.